Israel says waves of its warplanes have carried out preemptive strikes against Hezbollah militant targets in Lebanon, where authorities reported three deaths. Hezbollah says it has launched drones against Israel in retaliation for the recent assassination of one of its commanders. Early morning in northern Israel. The Iron Dome springs into action as Hezbollah begins what the militant group calls phase one of an attack on Israel. Hundreds of rockets and drones fired towards 11 military sites. Retaliation, it says, for the killing of one of its commanders in Beirut last month. Hezbollah says it struck a military base near Tel Aviv, a claim Israel denies. Hezbollah's chief cites the Gaza ceasefire talks as the reason for their delayed response to their commander's death in a televised address. They started saying that there will be a stop to the aggression and that there was going to be a ceasefire and to hold off. And that's why we took our time. We didn't tell anyone we would take our time, but honestly, we did, to give room for these negotiations. He warned that Hezbollah's response may not yet be over. Israel says it began preemptive airstrikes on Sunday against Hezbollah targets in Lebanon after they detected plans of an attack against its territory. The IDF claimed 100 fighter jets have struck and destroyed thousands of Hezbollah rocket launcher barrels aimed at Israel. It also released these images, it says, are of a Hezbollah drone being intercepted. Israel's prime minister issued a warning after an emergency national security cabinet meeting. We are determined to do everything to protect our country, return the residents of the north to their homes, and continue to follow a simple rule. Whoever hurts us, we hurt them. Sunday's escalation further heightens tensions as talks to reach a ceasefire and a hostage release deal in Gaza continue. In Gaza, Hamas militants say they fired a rocket at Tel Aviv. Israel says the rocket landed in an open area in Rishon LeZion, a city located just south of Tel Aviv. Sirens rang out in the area as the projectile crossed from southern Gaza into Israel, according to Israel's military. Hamas is designated as a terrorist group by many countries and organizations. A journalist, Balik Sladin, is in Tel Aviv, uh, where he joins us now. Balik, what's the latest you can tell us? Yes, uh, less than an hour ago, uh, the siren uh, went off in uh, Rishon Lezion. As you said, it's a city uh, just south of uh, Tel Aviv. And according to what uh, Hamas's military wing, as Adil Qassam just said, that they launched an M90 rocket, which is a long range, or uh, uh, it depends how long it uh, considered, long uh, 90 kilometers uh, range toward the city of uh, Tel Aviv. It uh, fell in open area uh, just outside of uh, Rishon Lezion. According to MARA, which is the Israeli uh, health authorities, uh, there were no casualties or uh, no damage as a result of uh, that uh, attack. Apparently, and according to what uh, uh, some reports are saying, there were two rockets that were fired from Khan Yunis, which is south of uh, the Gaza Strip. One of them fell in Gaza, so in the Gaza Strip, and the other one uh, uh, crossed into Israeli airspace. Again, open terrain, no casualties and no damage. And how does Israel see the fact that Hamas is still able to fire rockets at Tel Aviv? Well, since the beginning, the estimation was in Israel that until the end, quote unquote, uh, Hamas will uh, try to launch rockets against Israeli targets, uh, especially in the Tel Aviv area, because of uh, uh, the fact that they want to preserve this image of being uh, or uh, keeping their uh, capabilities, uh, even though that the Israeli uh, um, uh, operation is continuing. So right now, we're seeing that uh, as long or uh, uh, as the Israeli military advances into new areas, for example, in Deir al-Balah in recent uh, uh, couple of days, Hamas will launch rockets that are left there. That's what the estimation in Israel is. And on the other hand, while we are seeing that uh, Hamas's military wing is uh, taking responsibility for that, it's very probable that in the coming hours, or maybe even in the coming one hour, we will hear 
new instructions from the Israeli, uh, um, from the IDF spokesperson, excuse me, telling the uh, um, areas in which uh, the uh, uh, rocket was launched from to evacuate everyone from there because of uh, uh, the Israeli operations expansion toward that area. That has been the case, that has been the normal uh, in the recent uh, couple of months, and that's why uh, it's uh, very probable that we're going to hear new evacuation orders for the population uh, that are in that area as well. All right, Balik Slad in, in Tel Aviv. Thank you so very much. Well, Laura Blumenfeld is a Middle East analyst and former advisor to the U.S. State Department's Israeli-Palestinian negotiating team. She joins me from Washington, D.C. Welcome, Laura. Uh, let's talk about these attacks between Israel and Hezbollah. Do you think this is just a brief escalation, or are we looking at more to come in the next days and weeks? Um, look, it was a significant escalation, but it is the Middle East. There were bombs in the morning and by the afternoon in Israel and Lebanon, the beaches were open and in Egypt, the ceasefire talks continued. Um, you know, it's Middle East math. There are many open accounts. So I do think to answer your question, there will be more, unfortunately. And as Prime Minister Netanyahu himself said, this is not the end of the story. That was his quote. I mean, there's still, you know, open account with the Houthis. There's more potentially with Hezbollah. Uh, the Israeli civilians can't return to their homes, which are ghost villages right now in the north. A school is starting. It'll be the second year that Israeli children aren't able to attend school in their hometowns along that northern border. Um, and of course, there's Iran hanging out there. So I, I'm, I'm sorry to say at the start of our week that this is not the end. Now, let's just talk a little bit about the timing of the Hezbollah attack on Israel. Hezbollah says it was retaliating against Israel for the killing of one of its commanders last month, uh, but they didn't launch their massive attack until Israel attacked southern Lebanon. Why do you think that they waited? Well, part of it, I do take at face value what Nasrallah said. I mean, the ceasefire talks, there's been no breakthrough, but they haven't had a breakdown. And he certainly doesn't want to be part of that kind of blame game while they can't agree on the end game uh, between Israel and Hamas. Part of it is, you know, a, a bid for world favor. Another thing is, you know, as the head of the Mossad once told me, but I think Nasrallah is following the same rule, when it comes to retaliation, you choose the timing, you choose the method, and you choose the battlefield. And part of it is by making, making your opponent wait is the kind of psychological head game, right? Where, where you know, the Israelis have been on edge, I mean, so have the Lebanese for that matter, but the, the Israelis have been, uh, you know, in, in sort of deep angst mode. Um, the economy is suffering and all that is part of the pain, it's part of the punishment. And talking about waiting for retaliation, let's uh, just talk about Iran briefly. They vowed revenge on Israel for the killing of Hamas's political chief Ismail Haniya in Tehran last month. So far, they haven't attacked Israel. What do you think's going on there? Well, I think Iran for, for sure is playing the long, ga the long game. There is a clock ticking down um, in Palestine Square in Tehran, which is a doomsday clock, which supposedly is going to, uh, you know, count down to Israel's annihilation. Um, they do want punishment. I do believe there is a sort of need for blood, blood for blood. Um, and it could potentially show the form of some kind of terrorist attack abroad, perhaps. But in the meantime, you know, the United States has sent two strike force carrier groups and that submarine that they sent is not a defensive weapon, it is an offensive submarine. And I think that mm. they're getting that message loud and clear. Middle East analyst Laura Blumenfeld, thank you for your insights. Thank you.